Pacific gameplay. I can finally show you what the next few months of Battlefield 5 are really going to be like. A big thanks to EA for bringing me out to the DICE studio in Stockholm last week and letting me capture some gameplay for you all. In this video I'm really just going to talk about my first impressions playing the new content, give you a little bit of information about what that content really is like to play, and some information that I got from the developers about their vision for the Pacific and what they wanted to do compared to the base game. The gameplay is just kind of a mix of everything. There's a bit of Iwo Jima in there, there's a bit of Pacific Storm, there's some breakthrough, there's some conquest. But really, let's just get down to things. Let's let you know what the Pacific is really like. At the event in Stockholm, we were first given a presentation by Lars Gustafsson. He's a veteran developer at DICE. He's been around since the days of Codename Eagle before the Battlefield franchise even started. And he took the lead for the Pacific content. He gave us a little bit more information about what they really wanted to achieve with this update to the game. And in his words, this really stood out to me. The team wanted players with the Pacific to experience the invasion fantasy on reimagined iconic battlefields. Now that reimagined part I believe references DICE's intention to use maps that they've previously made in games like Battlefield 1942, but then update them and adapt them for this 2019 shooter scene. They wanted the battlefields to be epic, but they wanted them also to be believable at the same time. So for example, the Iwo Jima map is roughly 70% of the size of the real island, so that really is some epic scale. It's totally there, but it's slightly smaller than real life to make sure that gameplay is always entertaining. Lars also said they wanted to contrast the natural beauty of these specific locations with the devastating war machine, the Americans landing on the beaches with their heavy weaponry, and the Japanese fiercely defending their land with whatever weapons they had. The developers also told me that all of the maps have been designed with the breakthrough game mode in mind, which puts development of them in a similar position to the maps in Battlefield 1, which were designed around operations, which we now call breakthrough in Battlefield 5. Let's start with the Iwo Jima map first, arguably the highlight of the two maps launching with the Pacific. This map features the iconic black sand beaches, which when playing through the breakthrough mode as the Americans, you have to land on the beach and fight your way up towards the grasslands beyond. There's open, rocky terrain closer to the foot of Mount Suribachi. The mountain itself, it's a playable part of the breakthrough map, as well as the caves within it which make for really awesome close quarters fighting locations. Honestly, it's an extraordinary map. The feeling you get as the Americans as you try and gain a foothold on the beach, it's really quite tense, it's frantic. You know you've not got much cover, but you need to try and capture that first point so you can secure a beachhead. From there, you've got to fight your way across more open black sand towards bunkers set further up the beach. You've got to weave in and out of all this scattered tank rubble and various other bits of cover from the invasion. Then onto the grasslands beyond, you're taking strategic points that the Japanese have built along the way. Then towards the mountain across the black exposed rock where the land drops down into a valley that's topped by a crashed airplane. Then you move into the claustrophobic cave system. The gameplay moves from wide open spaces of the island down to this tight, fast infantry focused combat. In the caves, you've got 64 players scurrying around in a whirlwind of smoke, tracers and explosions. All the while, the Americans have to keep pushing as far as they can, trying to win. And then, the icing on the cake. You take Mount Suribachi as the Americans. You are at the summit of the mountain. DICE has built this truly iconic moment directly into the breakthrough game mode on Iwo Jima. You have one flag, exposed mountainside, and just all-out chaos for the last sector. Every squad, they've built up their requisition points so you know what's going to happen. In come the JB-2 rockets, the artillery strikes, the smoke barrages, tanks that are still alive from the previous sectors, grenades flying everywhere, the screams, the shouting, it's just complete chaos. And it makes for a wonderfully brilliant end to probably the best breakthrough or operations map 
that's ever been made for a Battlefield game. You play out the invasion fantasy either from the American perspective going balls to the wall and just pushing as hard as you can to take the island, with of course accompanying vehicles, planes and tanks on the ground, or you're from the Japanese point of view, where you've got to resist that advance at all costs and try and keep hold of your land. The ending of a breakthrough round, it's like the end of a marathon. There's so many deaths, so many kills, so many captures, revives, repairs, reloads. It's literally everything that Battlefield 5 has to offer in one match. And there's basically no compromises either. It's a fantastic experience. And then besides Iwo Jima, you also have another brilliant map, Pacific Storm, releasing as well. Of the two maps coming at the launch of the Pacific, I'm going to argue that this one is the more classic Battlefield in terms of its gameplay loop. And for players who sunk time into Battlefield 4, you are going to be right at home here. It's extremely reminiscent of Paracel Storm, arguably one of the best Battlefield 4 maps. Pacific Storm presents another invasion fantasy for you to play through in Breakthrough. The map is actually made by the same level designer who worked on Paracel Storm, so I'm not surprised to see the map play and look very familiar, but of course, we're now fighting in a World War II setting rather than a modern day one, so that threat of being blitzed by a little bird, that's not gonna happen here. There's a cluster of smaller and larger islands that are spread out into the shallow water that move away from the main island, which the Americans, they have to land on those smaller islands and they take various sectors in the breakthrough mode. The sectors are quite shallow, they don't stretch out too deep, but they do stretch very wide into the waters around the land, so you can pull off some massive flanks in some of the boats and the LVTs and you can attack the Japanese from both sides. The islands, they're full of these lush bushes and trees and these hidden bunker locations. It's mostly covered in grass areas, but there are some beaches as well. Those grass areas are perfect for hiding in and launching attacks from. Some of the bushes here, they rise up above your head and completely consume you. So I know that's going to set off some people's alarms saying, oh no, people are going to bush camp even more. But, you know, this is just my first impression. So when it was happening in that gameplay session, it was pretty funny, but if you're a clever recon player, you can actually stick a spawn beacon in those bushes and then just leave it there all round and you have yourself a really nice concealed spawn point for your squad. There are various little bases and encampments spread across these islands that act as locations for close quarters fighting in the conquest game mode and they make for the flag capture points as well. Now, as the name suggests, a huge storm can engulf the map at different points, very similar to the storm on Paracel Storm in Battlefield 4. And that adds some even more nostalgic vibes to this map if you've played a lot of Paracel Storm. When it moves in, it amps up the volume on wind and rain, and sometimes that can obscure some of the approaching footsteps of enemy soldiers, but... DICE did completely redesign the audio for this specific update. I didn't find myself getting caught completely unawares when this storm was rolling in, which is a good thing. The storm does clear off after a while, and when you're in the last sectors of breakthrough, the Americans have to push up onto the main island, which is a lot larger, and they have to capture an airfield that's held by the Japanese. Here, we have a similar situation to what happens on Iwo Jima. The tanks come together, the planes, the infantry, they go all out in this huge battle as the combat moves away from the water somewhat and you're onto some solid ground. The defenses here are a little bit more substantial, they're a bit stronger and easier for the Japanese to use, but arguably I think that's the way that Breakthrough should be working. It should be easier for the attackers to begin with in the round, and then it should become harder as it goes on, and then the opposite way round for the Japanese. It should be harder to hold on to those weaker positions at the beginning, and then hunker down in that final sector with some really strong defensive positions. Pacific Storm doesn't have quite the same level of epic that Iwo Jima has, but that doesn't mean it's also not a brilliant map. It is very, very good, and it offers a really good solid mix of infantry and vehicle gameplay over close, medium, and long distances. I preferred it on Breakthrough, but this map is almost just as good on the Conquest game mode as well. It feels like a classic Battlefield map. You've got all-out war and you've got that invasion fantasy mixed in. 
Now, overall, playing with new weapons like the M1 Garand, hearing that iconic ping, the shouting of Japanese soldiers, the yells of Americans, Mount Suribachi standing over the battle below, the vehicles pushing out of the water, fighters strafing through the skies above. DICE has absolutely nailed the atmosphere with this Pacific update. The Pacific is basically everything that the rest of Battlefield 5 isn't. You feel like you're fighting in a massive all-out war. You can actually hear the war happening this time. You can see it happening. War in the Pacific is Battlefield. It's the Battlefield that's been missing for the last year or so. If you thought Battlefield 5 at launch really wasn't a game for you based on how it played, then I highly recommend that you come back and get in with this Pacific update and just give it another go. Because with this update, it's basically a completely different game. The difference between the Pacific content and what's come before it, it is night and day. As soon as I started playing on Iwo Jima, landing on that beach as a soft, squidgy American soldier and hearing the roar of Japanese machine guns in the distance, I was immersed almost instantly. The Pacific brings experiences to Battlefield 5 that just have not existed up until this point. It's an absolutely fantastic update to the game, and I think DICE deserves massive credit for the work that they've put in here. So there you go, my first impressions of the Pacific. Thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed it, drop this video a like, and of course the dislike button is there if you didn't enjoy it. I will be back later today with a couple of more videos, some raw gameplay this time, both from Iwo Jima and Pacific Storm, so you can kind of get an unfiltered look at the new content, and then probably tomorrow, I'm going to make a video on Wake Island. I don't have any gameplay, but I can talk about the map and I can give you my experience. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you don't want to miss that video. But until then, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.